Got a little man with a bagpipes. Go on, folks. Right, right at the end of this campsite, there's a walk that takes you up onto the old railway track, so we're just going to go up there. Go on, guys. Get through the gate. Go on, turn left here. So that, that way down there takes you towards the town. This way takes you up towards the old railway line. Which I think is up here. I don't know what the ground's going to be like there. It's fairly hard at the moment. It's soggy here. Go on the girls. Well done. I'm sure this is not the way you're supposed to come. We're getting there. Quite a climb. There is an easier way to come. I think we missed it. Up here. Right, go on. Come on. Go on. Keep going. Whew. It's slippy here, isn't it? Come on, Poppy. That opens up a bit. Right here. And you're actually into the hills. Very nice. The town down below. Dogs are very excited about it. down to the town. Sign says Sawmill Bank, Woodland Path, Blackburn or Path. Let's try the path. Well, the path was really muddy there. I think we found a way back towards the road by the looks of it. So let's do that. Actually that uh, gate takes you up onto the bridge, which is the bridge over the railway track. So that's the railway track down there. Going that way. Okay. It's actually lower down than the woodland path. Okay. Now I understand. Yeah, so it brings you down onto the road here. Hopefully we can just head back that way. Your home, 18th century planned village. Oh, that's where it is, walking around, walking again. <laughs> where are you going, Poppy? Just going to go into the town and do a little bit of exploring. You've got the. I've got a map. Yeah. Got a map. We've got a couple of dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, anything so could happen. Exploring is difficult. Yeah. <laughs> Just to make it more Just difficult. The map is difficult. going to be difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm walking down here, aren't we? Yeah. And the petrol stations to yeah. our right. Yeah. So we want to go left. That's where some of the numbers first start. Yeah. There's various hotels. No, we want to go past. right. No, right. Yeah, there's, there's a campsite. We're walking down here. Yeah. We, we <laughs> I thought you knew said. how to read maps. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said we need to need to turn right. Yeah. yeah. So we're just gone past the butcher, haven't we? Yeah. The road off to our right, right and that's where the church is, and that's okay. If you want to parish down church. There? Yeah, we'll have a quick look at the parish church. 
there's two hotels here, the Grapes and the Liddesdale. Yeah. I think they're both dog friendly, but Okay, so we might pop in there for lunch later? We might do, yeah. Not now, T. Not now. Let's have a look at the menu. Do you think these dogs like going in pubs? Yeah. Let's just have a look at the menu. The, the Liddersdale is a five to eight menu, so evening menu. The Vine restaurant. Oh, that's my Are open 11 a.m. daily, dogs welcome in bar, food served Monday, Friday. So well, it's for customer use. So I might give that a go then. Yeah, so okay. if you want to eat, I think that's the, that's the one. Not yet, Tara. Not yet. No, no. Well, that's something we don't see very often down south, isn't it? Coal lorry. Obviously a lot of coal fire houses here. Anyway, here's the church. Don't tell us much about the church. This is Liddersdale Parish Church. Very right, um compact church isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think it's a bit locked. 1888, 1888 yeah, it was built was it? An old church. No. So let's see, do you want to have a look inside? Oh, let's see if it's open. Yeah it's not Carlisle Cathedral. No. But it's locked as well so. Onwards, next on our list. Next on our list, we'll go back across. Uh, what's three? What? There's War Memorial. Oh, war Memorial. Yeah, War in, Memorial. In the square <laughs> over there. So over there. we'll go that way. And that's the War Memorial. Yeah, yeah. Scottish Fire and Rescue Service. Lovely. Yeah. The river. Liddell Water, it's called. Little Water. Yeah, that's where it gets Liddlesdale. Liddlesdale, yeah. Yeah. Mid Little Street, this is. It's quite nice, isn't it? It is. the sound of running water. It takes you to a little bridge, doesn't it, by the looks of it. We'll go up here. Yeah, the riverside path carries on up there and there's an activity centre across the bridge, I think. See how much rain there's been. Oh, let me just get past that post, Poppy. Go on. There's direct Withow Bridge allows direct access from the Seven Stains Newcastle Trailhead in Douglas Square up to the existing network of Seven Stains Trails via the Rock UK Adventure Centre. In conjunction with the relocation of the Seven Stains Mountain Bike Trailhead from Dyke Crofts into Newcastle. Expected to bring many more visitors into the village. Rock UK currently welcomes 10,000 visitors every year. A new link will make it easier for guests to enjoy local shops, pubs and cafes. Uh, the local community will likewise be able to easily access facilities at the centre, including the swimming pool. So we're there, and it takes you all the way, wow, all the way out there. So I don't think we're going to do that in the morning. Have you got your mountain bike? No, I haven't got my bike with me. No. <laughs> On slight drawback to that. <laughs> so I'll have a quick look up the bridge. 
over the river. Awaiting. Quite high up this bridge. You never go too far with that and leave the dogs. Because they'll give you such a look, won't yeah. they? Oh, <laughs> you're leaving me here. <laughs> Do that. Right, Poppy. You haven't got your long lead on, Bot, so I don't really trust you with all these rabbits around here either. Yeah, I think you can carry on down there by the looks of it. We're going to go back this way and possibly think about some lunch. Yeah, so that's brought that road has brought us out to here. So that's quite a nice circular walk, isn't it? it is, yeah. And back on the main road. So this is the other pub, isn't it? The Trap Public House. You think this is only open for evening meals? As far as I could tell, yeah. Okay, it's, it's closed on Tuesdays anyway. Well, not here on Tuesdays, it's Friday. Yeah, oh yeah, it's yeah, Friday, isn't it? Yeah, 4pm to 1am. I think it's Saturday and Sunday it's open. Okay. Yeah, okay. it's open at 11 tomorrow. Yeah. This, this was the, the clue centre, but it seems yeah. better days. Oh, that is eh? Thomas hairdressing place. Yeah, so I think this was the McClue Centre. Yeah, in fact it says it up there. Where? On that above the door. Oh yeah. Do we go in or what? What oh, is? Some sort of community centre apparently. Is anyone in there? There's some people talking. Oh. Sorry? Looking at that building across there with the windows at the top, it's like a church. Yeah, probably an old chapel or something, isn't it? Yeah. into a house. Yeah. Useful little hardware place here, home hardware. Bought some gaffer tape there. You never know when you can... You never know when you're going to need gaffer tape. Or gorilla tape, or any other tapes. Other tapes are available. Looks like the old uh, watering hole here, doesn't it? That must be quite old, that. Yeah, you can see the drinking trough, isn't it? So, to tie your horses up. Right, so a bit about Newcastleton. Um, it's named Newcastleton after the parish and old settlement of Castleton. The village is also known as Copshaw Holm, or locally the Holm, which is what the hardware was called, yeah. after the name of the lands on which it was built. The village was founded in 1793 by the Duke of Buccleuch, following a request by the people of the valley to create a centre which would be similar to nearby settlements already established for the weaving trade. In addition to weavers, it became inhabited by trades like farmers, carpenters, tailors, shoemakers and cloggers. Cloggers? Yeah. The present layout of the village has seen little alteration since it was built. The arrival of the railway, which is down by, you know, where we're staying there, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. In the late 1800s, opened up communications and contacts with the outside world and the development of forestry, creating new industry. Today, stock rearing continues and all alternative small industry industries are encouraged to develop. Right. Well, okay. that's the history. Right. That's it. Right. chips. Goujon chips. Or in the grapes. Yep. Yeah. Very nice. trouble we're coming this time of year. Have a quick look. This is the Heritage Centre. 
but it's open daily except Tuesdays, Easter to October. Oh, it's closed for the winter. Uh, museum managed by volunteers. Okay. Well, this looks like an old church. Doesn't yeah, it? I think it is an old church, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh well, there's a board there. I'll have a look at the board. Right, so it says in reaving times the Elliot clan dominated this area. They were called the Thieves of Liddersdale. They ruled their, from their strongholds of Larison, Redhaw and Stobbs. Visitors to the borderland were seeking, seeking shelter. Are there no Christians to be found, he asked. No, came the reply. We are only Elliots and Armstrongs. By the mid-16th century, the Elliots were feuding with most of their neighbours who were engaged in a small war with the Scott family. It was a dangerous time. There was daily slaughter, stealing on all hands and justice nowhere. The Elliot war cry is, why do meddle with me? A few did. Nixons and Croziers rode with the Elliots and Armstrongs. Despite the fact that life was violent and short, the Reavers had a sense of humour and gave each other nicknames like Buggerback and Neb Nebulous Clem. Fair <laughs> As you do. It says we're deep in the heart of uh, Reaver country, aren't we? Yeah. The Scottish Middlemarsh was the most lawless part of the whole borderland. Some of the worst criminals passed through this area on the way to raid England. So 400 years ago, Reavers lived in the old centre of Castleton, further up the valley. It was home to some of the most martial families, in particular the Elliots. Without the protection of the law, ordinary families had to pay a more powerful borderer to protect them. And the deal was done with oats, barley and meal, or was known as black meal. Oh, like blackmail. Which led to the modern word blackmail. Black <laughs> if, property, if property was taken, the protector was expected to retrieve the goods. This was known as the hot trod and was the lawful pursuit of thieves. All male neighbours had to join the chase and a piece of burning turf was held on a spear to let others know what was happening. Speed and cunning were vital for a successful mission. The Reavers chose their, chose their horses, shaggy little ponies, for stamina and agility. There, there you go. And it actually says that this was an old congregational church. Yeah. yeah. Which my mum was. My mum was a of. congregationalist. She was, yeah, in Wheatonstead. Yeah. yeah, back so to the, the train ran from here to Edinburgh, says there. Oh, does it? Yeah. All right. The old Waverley uh, rail line. Yeah. That's the map. And it shows it on there. That's the Reavers Trail, isn't it? Yeah. I just gleaned that piece of information from there. Isn't it the station in Edinburgh is Waverley, isn't it? The yeah, isn't Waverley the Station, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so this the the train. From that station right. used to come to Edinburgh. To you. Yeah. Yep, up to Edinburgh. So where's the station then? Where we are. That's, that's a goods yard, isn't it? Yeah, we well, must have been very near there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We could have gone to Edinburgh on the train. Yeah. With a car on. No. Well, that's it for today's video. Um, what are we doing tomorrow? I think we might uh, go up to, I'm going to pronounce it wrong, aren't we? Hairwick, Harwick. 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 Not that way anyway, Harwick, towards yeah. Jedburgh. Yeah. And okay. Can't go to Hermitage Castle because it's, it's not closed. open. But yeah. That would have been interesting. Yeah. yeah. So if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up, remember to subscribe, and we'll catch up with you in the next one. Yep. Oh, it's here, isn't it?